So the important thing that I wanted to talk about was input splits. One sec. Okay. So this is the most important, uh, like an important a underlying aspect which you don't have to be worried about, but you need to know about it. So again, this is actually talking about uh, you have large files which are broken up into blocks, and those blocks have been stored. However, when you're actually processing it, you're not actually processing physical blocks. You're actually processing the input splits. So that's what this diagram shows. So if you look into this diagram a little bit more deeper, let me increase the size of this. So the block A here is 128 megs, but the block is cutting the input split the a record eight before it even ends so this is how your block is built but your input split is a full eight records so what it does is it goes to the next block and gets the rest of the data and actually builds the input split so what your size of the input split you can actually tell the program that this is what i want i want maybe if you, next time you, you want 16 records you can actually say that i want 16 records but it's not like record level it's size level Typically, the size of the input split is actually size of the data block. If you don't say anything, it's default. However, you can actually change it. You can change it to the min and to the max. And th that's where the logical break, if it identifies the logical break and it gives you that full set of records so that your map program can process that. So that is what this diagram clearly mentions. So even though your data block breaks at eight, it will completely get you the eighth record and it'll pass it on to your map program. Okay, that's this. I've had one more. Yeah. So this is also what uh, the input split is. Even though it's one block that has been broke, one one full file. This is one one full record. If it, that's one full record, which is split into two blocks, it will create that full block and create an input split for you so that's what is the difference between this i'll put the links inside uh, uh what is that in the in the video so that you folks can go and get it uh, but this is what it actually means so your your block is 128 megs it's physical but your input split is always logical because it is the end of your line and this input split can only be determined if you determine if you can say what is the input format so if you look at Apache Hadoop input format, so if you read the input format, it clearly tells you. Validate the input specification of the job. Split the input file into logical input splits. The only way you can split it into logical input splits only if you know what's the format. If it's a text, you know what's the where it ends. If it's a if it's a binary, you have to mention how to end the end the record, how to end the split file, and all that. So typically, uh, in a typical Hadoop process, you usually use text files, and these text files, uh, the end of line split is always backslash n, which is the uh, uh, line record break. So that is uh, so you typically use a text input format, and with a backslash n as the uh, record ender you will get all the records which end with backslash and into one big input split. And this data is passed on to the record reader, which will actually read that entire record, that full line, and sends that as a key value pair into your uh, map program. The key is pretty much what is the offset in your file. So if it's in the first look at first or the second or the third, it's pretty, uh, the key offset doesn't really matter for the record reader, but the key matters as uh, when the output of your map program comes. So this key that goes in, it really doesn't matter. But the most important key that comes out of your map is very important because it's used in the shuffle and sort. So that is very important for you. So don't worry about what is the key of the record reader. I wanted to explain a little bit of ma uh, this very well because when you look at Spark, you can understand how this entire thing processes. So that's why I wanted to give you a little bit of introduction of map and reduce, but I want to go in detail in Spark because everything is, little bit much more easier and simpler and faster and so i don't want to spend a lot of time trying to explain map reduce and hadoop and all that and instead of actually actually helping you on doing spark which is most typically what everybody does
but uh, the next sessions are going to be okay i'm going to stop the share and the recording and i'll talk about the, what i'm going to do in the next sessions